how to handle negative thinking and emotions. Okay, and um, this is very important topic. I'm sure you have come across people who um, always think negatively and have a lot of negative emotions. Um, actually, it's hard to find any person uh, who doesn't show negative emotions. Uh, most of the people we see, you know, sometimes they get frustrated, angry, unhappy, uh, uh, weary, burdened, and uh, a very negative, pessimistic, and, uh, and those people create a negative atmosphere around them. And uh, it's hard to relate to people like that. Some people get angry easily, and it's hard to calm them down. And uh, even uh, people who serve God and pastors sometimes, we, f we feel frustrated because the people don't listen to God and don't obey God. And then pastors can have a lot of pressure because the people are not obeying God. So we feel the pressure inside. The negative emotions is there. Um, now the, many people might deny it. They say, I don't have the emotion. I don't have uh, any uh, negative feeling. Now, uh, I have done marriage counseling many times. And I found that when I asked a wife, uh, you know, what's happening? The wife would tell me a lot of things that's happening and that she's unhappy. But when I asked her hus husband, very often the husband would say, oh, nothing, there's nothing wrong. And he would just say nothing. And now he might be unhappy, but he doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to talk about the problem. So very often he think he thinks there is no problem. He think, um, it just uh, uh, the woman uh, demands too much. The woman demands too much, so the, the husband, you know, hide his feeling and hide his thinking. And, and there are many people who serve God and say, I don't have emotions, I'm not angry, I don't have any frustration. But actually, if we examine ourselves, are we joyful, are we peaceful? Uh, we ask ourselves, we find that a lot of times we might be worrying, we might be thinking, oh, things are difficult, uh, it's uh, hard to change the people. Uh, so we, we might have different kind of negative thinking and emotions. So uh, how can we change this? But the problem is many people think they don't have to change. You know, it's, um, they think that, well, it's like that all the time and uh, we cannot do anything. So they, they don't see a need to change. So, um, now why do we have to change? Why do we have to change our emotions? Because when we have negative emotions, when we are unhappy, we'll, we'll lose strength. We'll lose the peace of the Lord. We don't have much strength and we'll be burdened and worry and, uh, and we might be disappointed and we might be burned out as time goes on. And, uh, and the Bible says rejoice in the Lord. So how can we rejoice in the Lord with all the difficulties? So today we talk about this and this is very important for ourselves and for counseling, for helping people to, uh, to, to be joyful, uh, to, to continue to have a joyful um, emotions and be joyful all the time and have positive thinking. Okay, now first the Bible says, guard our thoughts, desires, and emotions. Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your hearts, for everything you do flow from it. So everything we do flow from our heart. That if we are unhappy, then people can sense that we are unhappy. When we are under pressure, people can sense that. And when people sense that we are uh, we have negative emotions inside, people feel uncomfortable with us. People feel pressure with us. So everything of our life flow from our heart. 
And Jesus wants us to relax. He said, All you who are weary and burdened, come to me and I'll give you rest. Uh, for I am gentle and meek. <coughs> Take my yoke and, and learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. <coughs> So Jesus wants us to take his yoke and enjoy life because his yoke is easy, his burden is light. But we say it's not. How can we how can we take this promise of God? The way is that we really first we have a good relationship with God, then we live in joy and peace all the time. That we have peace and joy and and strength. And then we and trust to God everything and when we have peace and joy from the Lord that will attract people people will be attracted to us they will say this pastor has a lot of joy has a lot of positive thinking and positive emotions and people will be attracted to us and the ministry will be easier but if a pastor is always frustrated and one thing's done and then people can see that they are tense because in the heart is a lot of burdens. They want to perform better. And that gives them, you know, that uh, brings a lot of attention uh, to themselves. And to other people. So, so we understand that when we have more joy from the Lord, when we have a good relationship from the Lord, uh, actually we'll have better ministry. And people will uh, sense our joy and then they will be more positive when they are with us. So it's very important that we learn from this verse that we uh, learn to uh, have a heart of peace and guard our hearts, a heart of peace and love. Okay, Proverbs 17, 22, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bone. So. Here it says that when a person is cheerful and joyful, it is good medicine. It will heal our body and our soul, our mind. And a crushed spirit dries up the bone. If the person is depressed, unhappy, it will dry up the body and dry up the emotions and the spiritual life. And sadness and worry can destroy God's plan for us. Because if we are burdened, we, we are unhappy, we are frustrated, then we cannot enter the perfect plan of God. The perfect plan of God can only be entered when we relax in God and have a good relationship with Him and have joy from the Lord, have strength from the Lord. Then we can enter a higher plan. If a person works very hard but he's very frustrated, it will block the blessings of God, it will block his ministry. So it will stop him from going to a higher level of God's plan. And joy in the Lord can bring healing and blessing. It will bring healing to our, our mind, our soul, and also it will bring blessing from God when we rejoice in the Lord. Negative thinking, and it can affect our emotions. Okay, So what are negative thinkings? These are examples. So some people, they keep thinking about the problems or the person that affects our emotions. Some people that they say, oh, uh, the problem is so serious. These people, these people are not nice to me. And so they, they think about the problems and p people. And also thinking that, uh, that we are miserable. So this is how people are affected, that they think that, oh, we are miserable, uh, we are incapable, we, we cannot do anything good. So that is a low self-image. Uh, thinking that there is no way to correct the situation and there is no hope, no way out. Now, there is answer to all this. The problem, God can really help us. Or the people that affect us, we don't have to be affected by them. We can say, you know, God is for me, I'm not afraid, what can people do to me? They cannot do anything to harm me because God will protect me. And then, miserable, that God will open the way for us, that He will open the way, take care of problems, so we don't have to feel miserable and incapable. And we can build up the, our capabilities with God, with God's presence, uh, with God's 
ability, the Word of God to teach us to build up our capabilities. Now, if you learn this lesson well, to build up our thinking, always positive, yes, God can give me. With God, everything is possible. I can do the impossible things. I can do this thing but with the help of God. Whenever we face any problem, we say, Lord, please give me strength. Give me peace to handle the problem. For instance, some people are mistreating us. We'll say, okay, give, us, give me peace. Follow God's way. Instead of being angry, we'll forgive. We want to bless the person. We want to be nice to the person. This way we are growing. Our thinking will be positive. I want to help him. Instead of saying, that person is terrible. Actually, many husbands think that the wife is nagging too much and think negatively about the wife. And the wife thinks negatively about the husband. She said, the husband doesn't listen to me. So they each think negatively. How can we change that to positive thinking? We'll say, yes, the person might have a problem, but I want to treat him or her nicely. When I treat him or her nicely, they, then he will change. He will change gradually. If it doesn't change now, it's okay. I take my time. I relax. I take my time and gradually the, uh, the person can change. So instead of thinking is we are in, incapable, we say, yes, with God, everything is possible. I can change the situation step by step. Now, that's very important. Problems won't go away right away. It takes time. So it takes time for us to learn how not to be affected by people. It takes time for us to, uh, to learn not to be affected by negative situation. So the, the more we relax, the more we have wisdom to handle a problem and then we'll be more capable of handling problems. And then sometimes people think that there's no way to correct the situation and there is no hope. They think, oh, no, no, no possibility. The church is so weak. But if we build up a relationship with God, have the joy of the Lord, then it will affect the people. The people will be influenced by us. They will pick up our joy and we teach them how to handle the negative thinking and negative problem. Then gradually they will change. Now the Bible is full of positive thinking. Jesus said, you know, all these things, you know, when you have faith, you can move the mountain. That is positive thinking. That uh, when we seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to us. This is giving us hope. And when we love God, He will prepare for us things the eyes have not seen, the ears have not heard, and human mind cannot think of. So all these are positive thinking and thinking that there is always hope in God. Okay, five, keep thinking that is unfair. Many people say, oh, it's unfair. Uh, I'm treated in an unfair way. But if we say, even though it's unfair, if I trust in God, God will give me blessings, even though when people are not treating me well. But God will treat me well, so I can change a situation. I can change how people look at me. But first, I change the way I look at myself. I know that God have, uh, likes me when I love Him and obey Him, so I don't have to be affected by people. So that's changing our thinking with God's promises. And then some people think of a plan of revenge. They want the revenge. That is terrible because God doesn't like a person who doesn't forgive and want to re revenge. Instead of getting the benefit, they will get bad things out of the revenge. And some people build up hatred and self-pity. They they, uh, they hate someone or they have self-pity and say, oh, I'm good for nothing, nobody likes me. Now this thinking will, it's a self-fulfilled prophecy. When they think nobody likes them, then it becomes more and more true. But if we say God loves me and I care for people and I can gradually change people and influence people, gradually the people will treat us, treat us nicely. And some people complain to God. They say, God doesn't help me. That is a way to stop the blessing of God. So we don't want to stop the blessing of God. We want to think about all the good promises of God, all the blessings of God, and God, how He has helped us. Okay, and many people have excuses for negative thinking and emotions. Um, the reason why many people have negative thinking and emotions, they give all kinds of excuses. They have 
lies, they believe in lies. For instance here, someone hurts me so I have to be angry. Now this is not necessarily true. If someone hurt me, that is his problem. I don't have to be angry with him. Now it has hurt, uh, it has happened to me many times that someone hurts me, I'll just say that is his problem. He, he mistreats me, he doesn't treat me nicely, it, it is his problem and God will treat me nicely. So I say I will put down what he did to me, I put down what he said to me, I don't, uh, I, I, you know, I don't, uh, I don't think about what he has done to me. I just let it go. I just say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because God will give me back what I've lost from him. He, God will give me back. He cannot take away things from me. So some people say I'm incapable. They they say I'm good for nothing, so I have to worry and give up. But instead, when we have the problem, we say we can improve. For instance, for the preaching, when you hear that how we can live in the grace of God, the joy of the Lord, then we can tell people God is full of grace and mercy and gradually the people will be changed. The members will have more and more joy. They will enjoy coming to church. Do you want a church that the people, they just feel pressure to come to church and serve God? Or do you want the people to say, oh, I joyfully serve God. I joyfully come to church. I'm happy to come to, to, uh, to church. As, as David said, you know, when someone says to me, we go to the temple, I'm joyful. So we can bring joy to the church when we uh, follow God's way to enjoy God, relax in God, believe that God takes care of everything. When I love Him, He'll take care of everything. So I don't have to worry about anything. Then I can be joyful all the time instead of being, instead of worrying. Some people say, God doesn't help me, so I have to complain. Now, God's help doesn't come instantly. Sometimes the problem stays for a reason, so that we learn to trust in God. We, so we don't rely on ourselves. We trust in God, and God will eventually take away the problem. For myself, I have problems for many years. People mistreated me, gave me pressure, but I keep saying, God, you must have a way. You have a way out for me. And I keep trusting in God, keep relaxing in God, and God helped me step by step. And after I experienced the Holy Spirit, God gave me the wisdom not to take the words of people personally, not to be affected by people. And that uh, it really helps that, you know, when someone yells at me, I don't have to take it personally. That is his problem. I can say, God will really help me so I can, you know, I just let go. He yells at me. His words only stay in the air for a split second. He yelled at me and say, I don't like you. I don't, I'm not happy. Okay. I'll try to do things that help him to be happy. But if he continue to follow his way, I don't have to be affected by him. When he said he doesn't like me, I don't have to be hurt because, well, I'll try my best to treat him nicely. But even if I treat him nicely and he still uh, doesn't like me, then it is his problem. I don't have to take it. So it's very important not to take garbage, not to eat garbage. And God will help us uh, with time. Eventually, God will help us when we trust, keep trusting in God. Some people said, I was born to be irrational and emotional. I have no good reasoning. I'm always unhappy. I'm always depressed. Now, these are people's thinking. We don't have to think like that. We say, even though I had this problem when I was young, I can grow up to be stronger. I can trust in God. Every day when I praise God, I'll become a happier person. We can, you know, when we improve a little bit, it's very important to learn this. Even if we improve by 1% a day, we can say, thank God I improve 1% a day. Because if we really improve 1% a day, 100, 100 days will be 100%. So we can say, I improve a little bit today. I thank God for that. And sometimes we can improve faster than 1% a day. And then sometimes people say, my work or my church members have problems, so I have to worry or get angry. Now this applies to people who have a job or a church worker. 
and say, oh, my church members, they are so lazy. They have all kinds of problems. They fight and, and they don't have money. And then, then uh, the pastor would worry and get angry. But instead we'll say, we'll help them one by one to build up their life. First, we'll build up our own life, that we have the joy of the Lord, strength of the Lord, and, uh, uh, and then we can see the blessings of the Lord on us. And people come to us. And then from our words, our words can influence them. And also when we pray for them, they can experience the peace of God. Now this is a good blessing when we experience the Holy Spirit. When we, the more we pray, the more we'll experience the Holy Spirit. And then we lay hand on people. Now if we take care of our problems, if we have a good relationship with people, we can lay hand on people. And people can experience the peace of God, the power of God. It has, I have, it has happened to me many times. I pray for people. Some people get healed instantly. Some people become joyful and the burdens go away. And then that would change the church members. They become more optimistic. They feel more hopeful. They know that things will change with God's blessing. So instead of saying, I have to worry, we say, I would help it change, to help it to change step by step. Now, Paul was in great difficulties and he still rejoiced so we can choose our thinking and emotions. It's very important we can choose our thinking and emotions. Many people think, I have to feel like this. We can change it. How do we change? We say, I choose to be thankful to God. God has done so many things in my life. God is a good God. So I can choose to thank Him. When we thank Him, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, and think of the, all the good things of God, then we can choose to be joyful. I can be happy, even though we might be facing enemies, facing people who attack us. We say, God, you help me. God, you give me strength. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And then we'll have strength from the Lord and we'll have the joy of the Lord and that can change the situation. Now we need to understand that signal, uh, emotions are signal lights to distress. When we face distress, then we'll, we'll feel unhappy. Someone yell at us, we'll be angry. That is a natural reaction. The point is, the signal lights should not be on all the time. If someone yell at us, immediately we, we will feel unhappy. But I want to handle it as fast as possible. I want to say this is his problem. I don't have to be uh, bothered by that. I don't have to be influenced by that. I can still count my blessing. I can praise God and let the joy of the Lord take away that anger, take away that frustration. So we understand that emotions are signal lights. They don't have to stay forever. They just are there to tell us that there's, we are being attacked. Someone is mistreating us. There is a problem. So we feel frustrated. And then we understand that we need to handle the problem. But we can handle it peacefully. We can say, even though I have many problems to take care of, I can handle the problem step by step i don't have to take it personally so we understand that emotions are natural reactions and we don't have to let the reaction stay forever when we understand uh, now i'm happy unhappy when we have we, someone mistreat us we know that we are unhappy what can we do we'll say okay i know i'm unhappy because someone yelled at me i choose to think about god i choose to not to think about what he said now, there are many, many people, when someone yell at them, they will keep talking about what the other person has done. He yelled at me, he said this to me, he did not like me, he hurt me. They will keep talking about this. The more he talked about that, the more he will be hurt. But if we say, it doesn't matter. He cannot hurt me. I don't have to take his words. His words just stay in the air for a split second. He said, I don't like you. I just neglect that word. If the sound will go away in one split second, I can just relax in the Lord. Lord, you are good to me. You are always good to me. Then I can take care of that um, negative emotion. Okay, now for many people, they have a downward spiral. Downward spiral means, you know, when something happened, then they go down and down and down. When they are fatigued, very tired, they become agitated, 
are easily agitated, they get very nervous, easily uh, cost, uh, people can make them angry easily, and they feel very busy. They feel oh, uh, they burdened by a lot of work or a lot of burdens and anxiety. They are anxious, and then they have poor thinking. And then when they are poor thinking, it causes insomnia and fatigue. They cannot sleep well and they become very tired and they have more poor thinking and the whole person can melt down, no more strength and blow up very angry. So it can happen to a person, it becomes worse and worse when he is affected by negative emotions. When he keeps thinking, oh it's you no use and then he, he gets frustrated because he got angry at people because he yelled at people, he got angry, and then next day he got frustrated more and more problems. So, so emotions can go down more, negative emotions can go down more and more. So what are the motivation to manage our thinking and emotions? Now these are um, four points that we use, we can use for any kind of uh, 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 to change ourselves. First, God loves us. Always first point is God loves us very much. He want to He want to do great things in our life. He wants to bless our life. And then we are precious to God, every single person. <clears throat> every single person is important. God wants to bless our life, every single person. So you can say to the person next to you, God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. And the third point is, uh, when we are positive thinking emotions, it will bring blessings to our lives. So when we obey, when we love God, follow God, the positive side always will bring blessings. The Bible has promised that. The joyful spirit is good medicine. So that's the positive side and God is happy when we are joyful in the Lord, when we rejoice in the Lord, when we delight in God, God is happy with us and He will bless us. And negative thinking and emotions is always destructive. It will destroy our lives, it destroy our emotions, destroy our, our work, our ministry. It is not worthy to be affected by negative people. There are negative people in many places. We don't have to be affected by them. We don't have to take them seriously. We just say, okay, it's okay, but we treat them nicely. We treat them nicely, but we don't have to be affected by them. We just say, okay, I know you're unhappy. I try to help you. Whatever I can do, I'm willing to do. And uh, uh, we, you know, we can handle this peacefully instead of handling it with anger. Now, if it is our spouse. Sometimes the husband doesn't listen to, to the wife and say, oh, there's nothing, nothing, why are you so unhappy? Uh, and, and just say nothing, That it doesn't help. But the husband should say, okay, tell me, what is the problem? What is my problem? What did I do wrong? Please tell me what I, how I can change. That is handling the problem. Sometimes we need to handle the problem. I'm talking about people who are angry unreasonably then we don't have to take it seriously. But we can still ask him, uh, why are you unhappy? Can you tell me what it is? What can I do to fix it? So we can ask people uh, what we can do. And then if it's nothing we can do, we just have to accept it. If the person cannot accept it, we have to let go. But we can try to help the person to overcome the problem. So we don't have to be affected by negative people. And we'll regret of our negative thinking and emotions when we go to heaven. When we go to heaven one day, some people say, Oh, my whole life is full of negative emotions. I was always unhappy, always angry, always, always thinking negatively. And then they have ruined their life. So they will regret it. So these four points are for motivation in any areas. For instance, for sin. God loves us and we are precious to God, and if we obey God, then God will bless us. And then for when we sin, there is always destruction. So for any kind of behavior or thinking, this will uh, motivate us. So I hope we all believe that, yes, God does love us. 
and we are very precious to God. And when we obey God and love God and follow God and have positive thinking emotions, it's always beneficial. God will be happy with us. And then a negative side, when we have negative thinking emotions, when we sin, when we disobey God, there's always destruction. We cannot run away from God. So do you want blessings to your life or do you want destruction? I'm sure everyone wants blessings. But sometimes they say, I cannot control myself. So we need to learn to find out the problem, where the problem is. Why do I get angry so easily? Why do I get frustrated so easily? Why do, why do I get sad so easily? And find out the reason. Sometimes people hold on to some uh, world, uh, value, value system that causes them to be unhappy. For instance, they say, I have to have a lot of money. When I don't have money, then I'm unhappy. Or they say, my husband has to earn a lot of money. If he doesn't earn a lot of money, I will be unhappy. So they have a lie that they believe. They have a value system. They think that everything has to go right before they can be happy. But actually, even when things don't go right, we can say, okay, I'll just bear with this suffering and I just trust in God and God will give me strength and eventually He will help me overcome this problem. Okay, now there is a, a, a psychological uh, theory called ABC theory, uh, cognitive ABC model.